I love Stranger Things, especially the spooky lab scenes. That's why I've recreated part of that laboratory using Blender. Let me show you how I did it. I started with some references as usual. To match the height of the store, I did some research on Matthew Modini's height and placed a cube scale to match his height. I imported a reference image with him into my project and scaled it so his body matches the previously sized cube. Blender comes with Archimesh elements, which create realistic proportional shapes of doors, rooms, windows and so on. So I used this tool to create the door according to the reference image. The important points were the overall size and frame size. And it's double sided with metal handles at the back. I disabled the automatic material creation because I used different ones later. For the wall, I used a plane and scaled it to fit the recess. I positioned the camera and set up a 2 to 1 ratio similar to the series. And now I could extrude the edges to roughly shape the wall. I used a second plane for the ground. After scaling, I always applied the scale to avoid issues with modifiers and modeling. I unwrapped everything and started working on the tile texture. First I wanted to use assets, but I ended up with a modified version of the Blender Brick Texture node. I set the offset value to zero and imported another reference image. It was time to guess the color of the tiles. Without color grading, it was a creamy white tint. Obviously, I oversaturated it a bit, but I fixed it later in the process. The mortar size was too big and I also decreased the scale for smaller tiles. Everything else involved playing with the mapping node to match the reference. In the UV editor, I moved these edges to complete the texture shape of this wall. I also increased the mortar smoothness to one that's very important for the roughness and normal input later. To separate the lower part, I used a loop cut and separated the mesh into two parts, but decided to texture this later when the white tile texture is complete. For the ceiling, I duplicated the ground and moved it to the top. I briefly thought about modeling the ceiling, but since it's not the focal point of the scene, I decided to use a texture I downloaded a while ago from textures.com. Again, I scaled the values in the mapping node to match the reference proportions. To align the walls, left and right, I activated face snapping and set the position. For the ground, I duplicated the tile texture and changed the brick height and width to be the same. I counted the tiles between both walls and changed the mapping node scale accordingly to get the same look. It was time for some boolean action. For the ceiling lamps. Again I counted the ceiling plates to know the distance between each light. For the fluorescent tubes I used a simple cylinder. Two for each light should work fine. For the material I used an emission shader. More is not needed because any other pieces wouldn't be shown in the final render anyway. The main shape was done. It was time to make the tile texture realistic. It needed to be way more reflective, but turning down the roughness was obviously not the right way. As I plugged the factor value directly into the roughness input, it looked way too clean. So I had to mix it up with the noise texture. I used a brightness slash contrast node to tweak the noise output to have better control over the reflection strength. Also, I increased the roughness value of the noise texture to achieve an even finer effect. I also recognized small imperfections. That's why I mixed it up with a Musgrave texture. The scale needed to be very high to create these small bumps. It was also necessary to control the contrast with the color ramp. 
it was hard to see in the preview, so I used the color input to see the raw output. It makes sense to check your textures this way. I switched the mix node inputs and the roughness texture was done. For the normal input, I duplicated the mix node and used the brick color output and the must grave output as inputs. Finally, I added a bump node and connected the normal input of the BSDF. In the last step, I reduced the strength to 0.1. Photorealistic tiles? Check. Here's my final node setup if you want to use my settings. Now I could duplicate the material and change the width and height to 0.5 to create squares. And of course, the mapping node scale and brick color needed some changes to match the reference. Now that the rough scene is finished, I took care of the finer details. I decided to work on this door first and increased the gap between both sides. Then I added some loop cuts to extrude these metal plates. To create two individual plates for each door, I extruded the top one first and then the lower part. After beveling, I used cube projection to unwrap everything. For the materials, I used some surfaces from Quixel Bridge and modified the color or roughness if necessary. I deleted the handles that were facing my view and started modeling a simple screw head. I used a cube and added a subdivision surface modifier to create a spherical object. Then I cut it in half and flattened the other half a bit. Afterwards, I selected vertices like a plus and beveled them. Then I extruded it backwards and beveled the edges again. Probably a bit overkill because it wasn't visible in the final render anyway. Finally, I duplicated the screw and moved it according to the reference image and also flipped all screws to the other side too. For the materials, I used a steel texture. The automatic door opener is basically just a cube with some more cubes and cylinders and screws I modeled before. Just some extrudes and bevels to shape each component roughly. It didn't need it to be too detailed because I didn't want to render any close-ups. Lastly, I snapped everything to the door and moved the door even more backward. For the contact plate, I used a plane with a solidify and bevel modifier. It started to look like something, but the color didn't match at all. I was pretty sure they did it in post, so I tried to use Blender's compositing tab to tint my render white. The color balance node did the most important job. The vignette effect I created with an eclipse mask mixed with the color corrected output. To control the vignette smoothness, I added a blur node set to fast gaussian. Still a bit punchy, but enough to work with for now. At this point I recognized I forgot the ceiling glass. I selected all edges and modeled a simple glass plane with the frame. To get something that looks like whippled frosty glass, I used a normal map I downloaded some time ago from textures.com again. Also I increased the roughness slightly. But glass and blender works a bit differently than other materials. You probably noticed the scene looks way darker now after I added this glass material. That's not because of the normal map or roughness input, it's because the calculation of light through glass by using just the BSDF loses information. To fix this, I added a light path node and added the shadow and reflection way together with the math node and used the result as a factor for the mix of a transparent node and the glass BSDF. Now, if I use the advanced node setup, you see the difference immediately. I extruded the light frame a bit and gave it an aluminum material. Also, I added another plane on the top to block any light bouncing 
to Nirvana. For the next part, I modeled the room behind the door. I didn't put too much effort into it because it's hidden except through the small gap between both doors. I just tried to match roughly the shape of the room to achieve the white lighting. For the ceiling, I added some loop cuts in X and Y direction to get squares. After beveling those edges, I selected the faces between to extrude and scale them like in the reference image. For the lights, I duplicated one light tube and used two array modifiers to fill the ceiling in the correct way. After a short viewport render to check my actual progress, I added a color ramp to the ground roughness to make it less reflective. Looking back at the reference image, I beveled these edges, but this time with a high segment number to make it look very clean and smooth without using smooth shading. The lower part needed a solidity modifier to fill the small gap. To get correct reflection and light bounces, I also duplicated the walls left and right and used them to create the floor edges. Those edges I beveled the same way. I rendered another test frame to check my current progress. It was time to create the children's room, or more precisely, the doors. I made it easy and duplicated the door and the door frame and snapped them together. I used the frame to create a pool object and now I was able to duplicate the door group and move them to the right positions by counting the tiles between each door using the video as a reference. With this technique I knew exactly where the floor ends and I could bend both walls by 90 degrees at this point. Both edges I beveled like on the other side. By adding the booleans to the upper and lower part of the wall, I could cut holes to the exact position. One door was still missing, so I duplicated it for the last time and snapped it to the other side. I used another boolean to cut the space for the small window. I bridged both edge loops and used the bool object as the frame. I separated the inner selection and added another glass material to it. Using the noise texture with increased roughness values gave some surface imperfections to it. Probably again a bit overkill for such a small detail in the scene, but I've just got used to it in this way. Time for another test render and it started to look nice. I beveled the door frames a bit like I did to almost every edge in my projects because in reality nothing is sharp like razor blades instead of razor blades. I gave all floor lamps a new emission material with lower strength to fit the reference even more. Also I added the wall behind the camera view with the same process I did with the other ones. The same applies to the ceiling lamps. I counted the plates and added pool objects to the position with duplicating the glass elements to these cuts and merging them by distance. I finished the ceiling. For the door window I added some walls behind to create a room and added some light tubes. Next test render but this time it looked pretty close to what I wanted to achieve. Just some minor details are still missing. I changed the metal plate size of each door, except the main one facing the camera. I recognized this after counting the tile amount again. Also I changed the base handle created from the ArchiMesh tool to look more like metal and not wood. I deleted the first loop and scaled up the second one. After that, I inverted my selection and pressed Alt-S to scale along its normals. Then I just needed to switch the other one with a copy of the modified version and I could start to put one handle on each other door. In addition, each door get a locking mechanism. I used a cylinder to model it, a couple of extrudes and scales, of the front face was enough. 
Again, I beveled the edges in the end and moved a copy to each door. After that, I recognized the screws were way too big, so I scaled them down to like 50%. Lastly, each door had a small plate with the name for each kit, or better a number. I put the cursor to the position and added a plane and scaled it. Two loop cuts and extruding the upper and lower parts shaped these nameplates. I deleted the open faces and added a solidify and bevel modifier for some thickness. Two more vertical loop cuts separated the middle selection so I could extrude it, bevel it and add a new material. Finally, I added two copies of my screw to it and moved a copy to each door. Time for a last test frame before I added numbers and the rainbow color to the wall behind the big door. And of course the security camera. For the numbers I used Blender's text tool and added one to each door. And the solidify modifier gave each number some thickness. Then I separated the wall for the main room into eight parts. Upper and lower part and the other six for the rainbow colors. Nothing special, but enough to make it visible through the door gap. The last important object for this shot is the security camera. I found a pretty solid reference on Google. Not exactly the same, but good enough for another perspective. A cube shaped the body, I duplicated the outside faces and separated them to a new object with a solidify modifier. For the lens, I used a subdivided square and smoothed it to a circle. That was important for the close-up in the beginning to get smooth, realistic reflection. Also, I curved the lens with proportional editing to bend the reflection. For the screws left and right, I used again the same ones I used in this whole project. And the red lamp is just a sphere with an emission shader. The cables were also easy to create with curves. After positioning, I just needed to increase the depth. The wall mount is again just a cube I beveled after scaling. For the final animation, I also used some of Blender's texture painting to paint some dirt and mood onto the walls and ground. Also, I created the clock out of a couple of cubes and animated it. If you liked this video, Leave a like or a comment, that means a lot to me. Also, here is the final animation with some personal adjustments, I would say. Thanks for watching.